This is a read aloud of The Two Grandmothers by Olive Senior. Mummy, you know what? Grandma Della's baby chickens, yellow and white ones. She made me all them and I help her gather eggs. But I don't like to go out the back alone because the turkey gobbler goes gobble, gobble, gobble after my legs. He scares me. And Mr. Sunson next door has baby pigs. I don't like the mother pig though. Grandma lives in this pretty little house with white lace curtains at all the windows. Mommy, you know you must come with me and Daddy next time. And you can peek through the louvers. Grandma calls them jealousies. Isn't that funny? And you can see the people passing by. But they can't see you. Mommy, why can't we have lace curtains like Grandma Dell so we can peek through? Nobody ever goes by our house except the gardeners and the maids and people begging and rasters selling brooms. Many, many people go by Grandma Dell's house. They all call out to her, and Grandma Dell knows everyone. My special friend is Miss Princess, the postmistress, who plays the organ in church. She wears tight, shiny dresses, and her hair piled so high on her head, and she walks very slow. And everybody says she's sweet on Mr. Blake, who is the new teacher, and he takes the service in church when Parson doesn't come. And then Miss Princess gets so nervous, she mixes up all the hymns. Mr. Mac came to fix Grandma's roof, and Grandma said, Poor man, poor man, all the time. Mr. Mac's daughters, Eulalie and Irma Dean, are big girls at high school in town, though Eulalie fell, and they don't know what is to be done. Mummy, why are they so worried that Eulalie fell? She didn't break her leg or anything, for she's walking up and down past the house all day long and looks perfectly fine to me. Mummy, I really like Grandma Dell's house. It's nice and cozy and dark and cool inside with these lovely big picture frames of her family. And Daddy has a baby and Daddy has a little boy and Daddy on the high school football team. They won Manning Cup that year, Grandma says. Did you know that mommy and daddy at university and a wedding picture of daddy and you and me as a baby and all the pictures you send grandma every year? But those are the small pictures on the side table with the lovely white lace tablecloth. In the picture frame on the wall, there is great grandpapa Dell with a long beard and whiskers. He's sitting down in a chair and great-grandmama is standing behind him. And then there's a picture of grandma herself as a young lady with her hair piled high like Miss Princess and her legs crossed at the ankles. She looks so lovely. But you know what, mommy? I didn't see a picture of daddy's father. And when I asked grandma, she got mad and showed me away. She got even madder when I asked her to show me her wedding picture, I only wanted to see it. Mommy, do you know that Grandma sends me to Sunday school? We stay over for big church and I walk home with her and all the people. It's so nice. Only Parson comes to church in a car. Mommy, did you go to Sunday school? I go with Joycey, a big girl next door, and Grandma made me three dresses to wear. She says she cannot imagine our girl child, that's me, can leave home with nothing but blue jeans and t-shirts and shorts and not a single church dress. She has this funny sewing machine, not like Aunt Thelma's. She has to use her feet to make it go, just like the organ in church Miss Princess pumps away with her feet to make it give out this lovely sound and work so hard you should see her. And the first time I went to Grandma's church, I was so scared of the bats. The church is full of bats, but usually they stay high up in the roof. But as soon as the organ starts playing on Sunday, the bats start swooping lower and lower. And one swoop so low, I nearly died of fright and clutched Grandma Dell so tight, my hat flew off. Did I tell you Grandma made me a hat to wear to church? with her own two hands. 
she pulled apart one of her old straw hats. Leghorn, she said, and made me a little hat that fits just so on my head with a bunch of tiny pink flowers. Grandma didn't send it with me, though, or my Sunday dresses. Says she will keep them till I return, for she knows that I am growing heathenish in town. When Grandma dresses me up for church, I feel so beautiful in my dresses. She made with lace and bows and little tucks, so beautiful, and my hat. I feel so special that my own grandma made these for me with her own two hands and didn't buy them in a store. Grandma loves to comb her, my hair. She says it's so long and thick and she rubs it with castor oil every night. I hate the smell of castor oil, but she says it's the best thing for hair and after a time I even like the smell. Grandma Dell says my skin is beautiful like honey and all in all, I am a fine brown lady and must make sure to grow as beautiful inside as I am outside. But mommy, how do I go about doing that? Nights at grandma are very funny. Mommy, can you imagine there's no TV and it's very, very dark. No street lights or any lights. We go to bed early and every night grandma lights the oil lamps and then we blow them out when we are going to bed. You have to take a deep breath. And every morning, Grandma checks the oil in the lamps and cleans the shades. They have Home Sweet Home written all around them. So beautiful. She cleans the shades with newspapers. She says, when I come next year, I'll be old enough to clean them all by myself. Grandma knows such lovely stories. She tells me stories every night. Not stories from a book, you know. Mommy, the way you read to me, but stories straight from her head. Really? I am going to learn stories from Grandma, so when I am a grown lady, I will remember all these stories to tell my children. Mommy, do you think I will? Mommy, you know Grandma Elaine is so funny. She says I'm not to call her grandma anymore. I'm to call her Towza, like everybody else, for I'm growing so fast nobody would believe that she could have a big young lady for a granddaughter. I think it's funny. I'm practicing calling her Towza, though. She's still my grandmother. I said to her, Grandmother, I mean Towza, Grandma Dell introduces me to everyone as her granddaughter. She calls me her little gran, and Grandma Elaine says, Darling, the way your grandmother Dell looks and conducts herself, she couldn't be anything but a grandmother. And, honey, she and I are of entirely different generations. Grandma Elaine says such funny things sometimes, like she was dressing to go out last night, and she was putting on makeup, and I said, Grandma, she was still grandma then, I said, Grandma, you shouldn't paint your face like that, you know. It is written in the Bible that it is a sin. Grandma Dell says so, and I will never paint my face. And she said, Darling, with all due respect to your paternal grandmother, she's a lovely lady, or was when I met her the one and only time at the wedding. And she has done one absolutely fantastic thing in her life which is to produce one son, your esteemed father, one hunk of a guy. But honey, other than that, your grandmother Dell is a country bumpkin of the deepest waters and don't quote her goddamn sayings to me. Mommy, you know Grandma Elaine swears like that all the time. I said, Grandma, you mustn't swear and take the name of the Lord in vain. And she said, Honey child, with all due respect to the gray hairs of your old grandmother and the first class brainwashing your daddy is allowing her to give you, I wish my granddaughter would get off my back and leave me to go to hell in peace. Can you imagine she said that? She's really mad that you allow me to spend time with Grandma Dell. She says, Honey, 
I really don't know what your mother thinks she's doing making you spend so much time down there in the deepest, darkest country. I really must take you in hand. It's embarrassing to hear some of the things you come out with sometimes. Your mother would be better advised to send you to charm school next summer. You are never too young to start. Melody Ann next door went last year and it's done wonders for her. Turned her from a tomboy into a real little lady. Mommy, I really can't stand Melody Ann anymore, you know. And your mother had better start to do something about your hair from now. It's almost as tough as your father's. And I warned your mother about it from the very start. I said, honey, love's all right. But what about the children's hair? If you were my child, I would cut it right off to get some of the kinks out. Mommy, you won't cut off my hair, will you? Daddy and Grandma, they like it just the way it is. What does Grandma Elaine mean when she says my hair is tough, Mommy? Anyway, Mommy, can I tell you a secret? Gran, I mean Towza, told me, and she says it's a secret. But I guess since you are a daughter, she won't mind if I tell you. Do you know that Towza has a new boyfriend? He came to pick her up on Saturday night. Remember I told you Joyce was staying up with me and we watched TV together while Towza went out? That's the time she was painting her face and she put on her fabulous silver evening dress. You know the strapless one and her diamonds with it. The ones her husband after grandpapa gave her. And I was so proud she was my grandmama. She looked wonderful like a million dollars. And when I told her so, she let me spray some of her perfume on myself before Mr. Kincaid came. He's a tall white man and he kissed Towza's hand and then he kissed my hand and he had a drink with Towza and was very nice and they drove off in a big white car like what Uncle Frank drives mummy. A Benz, and Towza was looking so pleased the whole time. And before Mr. Kincaid came, she whispered and said her new boyfriend was coming to take her to dinner, and he was so nice and handsome and rich. Towza was looking as pleased as Eulalie did when the male van driver was touching her when they thought nobody was looking. But I was peeking through the louvers at Grandma Dell's, and I saw them. But, Mommy, I don't know why Towza wants me to spend more time with her, for she's never there when I go, always rushing off to the gym and the pool and dinners and cocktails, or else she's on the phone. I love Towza so much though. She hugs me a lot and says things that make me laugh, and she gives me wonderful presents. Do you know she made Joyce bake a chocolate cake for me? And my new bracelet is so lovely. It's my birthstone, you know. Mommy, you know what? Grandma Elaine, I mean Towza, says she's going to talk to you about taking me to see my cousins Jason and Maureen in Clearwater when she goes to do her Christmas shopping in Miami. Oh, Mommy, can I go? You know, all the girls in my class have been to Miami and you have never taken me. Mom, can we go to Disney World soon? I'm so ashamed. Everyone in school has been to Disney World and I haven't gone yet. When Towza goes out, Joyce and I sit in the den and watch TV the whole time. Except, I usually fall asleep during the late show. But Joyce watches everything until TV signs off. And next morning, when she's making me breakfast, she tells me all the parts that I missed. Mommy, can't we get a video? Everyone in my class has a video. She says she's getting Mr. Kincaid to give her one as a present. Towza is so much fun. Except, Mommy, what does she have against my hair and my skin? She always seems angry about it. And Joyce says, Grandma is sorry I came out dark because she's almost a white lady and I am really dark. But, Mommy, what is wrong with that? When I hold my hand next to Joyce, my skin is not as dark as hers or Grandma Dell's. Or daddy's even. Is dark really bad, mommy? Mommy, did you know that a whistling woman and a crowing hen are an abomination to the Lord? That's what Grandma Dell told me and Pearlie when Pearlie was teaching me to whistle. Don't tell Grandma. 
but I can whistle. Want to hear me? <laughs> ha ha. Mommy, can you whistle? Pearly is my best friend in the country. She lives near to grandma in this tiny house. So many of them and all the children sleep together in one room on the floor. And mommy, you know what? Pearly has only one pair of shoes and one good dress and her school uniform. Though she hardly goes to school and some old things she wears around the house that have holes in them. Can you imagine? And you should see her little brothers. Half the time they are wearing no clothes at all. Mommy, can you send Pearly some of my dresses and some of my toys, but not my Barbie doll? She doesn't have any toys at all, not a single one. And Pearly is just a little older than me, and she has to look after her little brothers when her mommy goes to work. She has to feed them and bathe them and change them, and while she is changing the baby's nappies, her little brothers get into so much trouble. And when they break things, when her mother comes home, she beats Pearly. Poor Pearly. She can balance a pan of water on her head. No hands. You know, I wish I could do that. She goes to the standpipe for water and carries the pan on her head without spilling a drop. Sometimes I go with her. I borrow a pan and though it's smaller than Pearly's, I always end up spilling the water all over me. And the pan gets heavier and heavier till I can hardly bear it before we get to Pearlie's house. Pearlie can wash clothes too. I mean real clothes, not dolly clothes, really. Her baby brother's nappies and things and she cooks dinner for them. But the way they eat is really funny. They don't have a real kitchen or anything. She has three big rocks in the fireplace and she catches up a fire when she's ready. And she has to fan it and fan it with an old basket top. And there is a lot of smoke. It makes me sneeze. Then, when the fire is going, she puts on a big pot of water. And when it is boiling, she peels things and throws them in the water to cook. Yams and cocos and green bananas. And that's what they eat. No meat or rice or salad or anything. Pearly uses a sharp knife just like a big person, and she peels the bananas ever so fast. She makes three cuts and goes zip zip with her fingers, and the banana is out of its skin and into the pot. She says you must never put bananas and yams to boil in cold water, for they will get drunk and never cook. Did you know that? Once I helped her to rub up the flour dumplings, but my dumplings came out so soft Pearly said they were like flaw flaw and she won't let me help her make dumplings again. Pearly has to do all these things and we only get to play in the evenings when her mother comes home. And can you imagine mommy? Pearly has never seen TV and she has never been to the movies. Never mommy. Do you think Pearly could come and live with us? I could take her to the movies though I don't know who would look after her baby brothers when her mother goes to work. You know Pearly doesn't have a father. She doesn't know where he is. I'd die without my daddy. Grandma Dell says I'm to be careful and not spend so much time with Pearly. For Pearly is beginning to back chat and is getting very force ripe. Mommy, what is force ripe? Sometimes I play with Eulalie's baby. His name is Oral and he is fat and happy and I help to change his nappy. He likes me a lot and claps his hands when he sees me and he has two teeth already. He likes to grab hold of my hair and we have a hard time getting him to let go. Mommy, why can't I have a baby brother to play with all the time? Eulalie and Ermandine love to comb my hair and play with it. They say I am lucky to have tall hair, but Grandma Dell doesn't like Eulalie and Ermandine anymore. She says they are a disgraceful Jezebel lot and dry high and bring down shame on their father and mother who try so hard with them. Sometimes my grandma talks like that and I really don't understand and when I ask her to explain she says cockroach no business in a fall roost and she acts real mad as if I did something wrong 
And I don't know why she is so vexed sometimes and quarrels with everyone, even me. She scares me when she's vexed. You know when Grandma Dell is really happy? When she's baking cakes and making pimento liquor and orange marmalade and guava jelly. Oh, she sings and gets Emmanuel to make up a big fire out in the yard. And they put on this big, big pot. And we peel and we peel guava, hundreds of them. When we make stewed guavas, she gives me a little spoon so I can help to scoop out the seeds. And I have to be real careful to do it properly and not break the shells. Mommy, right here you have this little glass jar full of stewed guavas from Grandma Dell that I helped to make. Grandma gets so happy to see her kitchen full of these lovely glass jars, full of marmalade and guava jelly. But you know what? Grandma just makes it and then she gives it all away. Isn't that funny? And one time she baked a wedding cake and decorated it too. Three cakes in different sizes she made. And then she put them one on top of the other. Grandma is so clever. She allowed me to help her stir the cake mix in the bowl. But it was so heavy I could barely move the spoon. When it was all finished, she let me use my fingers to lick out the mixing bowls. Yum, yum. Why don't you bake cakes so I can lick out the bowls, mommy? This time, I found that I had grown so much, I couldn't get into the church dresses grandma made for me last time. So, she made me some new dresses and she says she will give the old ones to Pearlie. Mommy, can you believe that everyone in church remembered me? And they said, what a way you grow and how is your daddy and how is your mommy till i was tired mommy that is the way they talk and you know just like richie and the gardener next door what a way you grow they don't speak properly the way we do you know mommy eula lee and irma dean don't go to church or school anymore and irma dean says when I come back next year, she will have a little baby for me to play with too. And Eulalie says, she will have a new little baby. Mummy, mm -hmm. you know what the girls in school say? They say I am the prettiest girl in the school and I can be Miss Jamaica. When I'm big, I'll go to the gym like you so I can keep my figure and I must take care of my skin. For even though I have excellent skin... Towser says I must always care for it. Towser spends hours before the mirror every morning caring for her skin and her new boyfriend Mr. Samuels is always telling her how beautiful she looks. Towser really loves that. Mr. Samuels is taking her to Mexico for the long Easter weekend and Towser is going to Miami to buy a whole new wardrobe for the trip. She says she's going to bring me all the new movies for the video. Mommy, when I am old like grandma, will men tell me I'm beautiful too? Can I have my hair relaxed as soon as I am 12, as you promised? Will you allow me to enter Miss Jamaica when I am old enough? You know Jason likes me a lot, but he's my cousin, so he doesn't count. Mom, am I going to Clearwater again this Christmas to spend time with Jason and Maureen? Maureen is always fighting with me, you know, but Jason says she's jealous because she isn't pretty like me. She's fat and she has to wear braces on her teeth. Will I ever have to wear braces? Mom, when I go to Miami, can I get a training bra? All the girls in my class are wearing them. And a makeup starter kit. Mom, when are we going to get a dish? Mom, do I have to go to Grandma Dell's again? It's so boring. There's nothing to do and nobody to talk to. And I'm ashamed when my friends ask me where I'm going for the holidays and I have to tell them only to my old grandmother in the country. You know Gina is going to Europe and Melody Ann is spending all of her holidays in California and Gina Ann is going to her aunt in Trinidad. Mom, even though Grandma Dell has electricity now, she has only a small black and white TV. And I end up missing everything 
for she doesn't want me to watch the late show even on weekends. And grandma's house is so small and crowded and dark and she goes around turning off the lights. And at nights, grandma smells because she's always rubbing herself with liniment for her arthritis. And it's true grandma is in terrible pain sometimes. Mommy, what is going to happen to grandma when she's real old? She's all alone there. She got mad at me when I told her I didn't want her to rub castor oil in my hair anymore because I was having it conditioned and the castor oil smells so awful. And on Sunday, Grandma still wants me to go to church with her. It's so boring. We have to walk to church and back. It's miles in the hot sun. I can't walk on the gravel road in my heels. If a parent passed and saw me, there among all the country bumpkins, I would die. And Grandma says I am far too young to be wearing heels, even little ones. And I tell Grandma I'm not young anymore. I'll be entering high school next term and everybody is wearing heels. She criticizes everything I do as if I'm still a baby. And she doesn't like me wearing lip gloss or blusher, though I tell her you allow me to wear them. And Grandma still wants me to come and greet all her friends. It's so boring. As soon as somebody comes to the house, she calls me. And I have to drop whatever I am doing, even watching TV. And I have to say hello to all these stupid people. It's so boring. Mom, you wouldn't believe it. There's nobody but black people where Grandma lives. And they don't know anything. They ask such silly questions. And they are dirty. You know this girl, Pearlie, I used to play with when I was little? She is so awful looking, going on the road with her clothes all torn up. And you should see her little brothers, always dirty and in rags, with their noses running. I can't stand to have them around me. And Pearlie and everybody is always begging me clothes and things. And I can't stand it, so I don't even bother to go outside the house half the time. When anybody comes... I can see them through the louvers and I just pretend I am not there or I am sleeping and everybody's just having babies without being married like Pearlie's mother and they are not ashamed. The worst ones are those two sisters, Eula Lee and Ermandine. You can't imagine how many children they have between them, a new one every year and grandma says not a man to mind them. But mommy, something terrible happened. That Eulalie and I got into an argument. She's so ignorant and I told her it was a disgrace to have babies without being married. And she said, who says? And I said, everybody. My mommy and Grandma Elaine and Grandma Dell for a start. And she said, Grandma Dell? Yes. You ever hear that she that is without sin must cast the first stone? And I said, what do you mean? And she said, ask your granny, Del, Hi, Miss High and Mighty, since her son turned big shot and all. Ask her who is his father and why she never turned teacher and why her daddy almost turned her out of the house and never speak to her for five years and why they take so long to let her into mother's union. And Eulalie wouldn't tell me any more. And they were so awful to me. They started singing. Before I marry Dango Ogo Mango Tree, I will live so me one. You know that song, Mommy? I went home to ask Grandma Dell what Eulalie meant. But Mommy, when I got home, it was just weird. I got so scared that I got this terrible pain in my tummy. My tummy hurt so much I couldn't ask Grandma Dell anything. And then, when I felt better, I couldn't bring myself to say anything, for I'm scared Grandma Dell will get mad. But, Mommy, do you think Grandma Dell had Daddy without getting married? Is that what Eulalie meant? Mommy, wouldn't that make Daddy a bastard? Mommy, please don't send me to stay with Aunt Rita in Clearwater again. Ever. Nothing, Mommy. It's that Maureen. She doesn't like me. Mommy, am I really a nigger? 
That's what Maureen said when we were playing one day and she got mad at me and she said, you're only a goddamn nigger. You don't know any better. Auntie Evie married a big black man and you are his child and you're not fit to play with me. Mommy, I gave her such a box that she fell and I didn't care. I cried and cried and though Auntie Rita spanked Maureen afterwards and sent her to bed without supper, I couldn't eat my supper for I had this pain in my tummy, such a terrible pain and Uncle Rob came into the bedroom and held my hand and said that Maureen was a naughty girl and he was ashamed of her and he thought I was a very beautiful, lovely girl. But mommy, how can I be beautiful? My skin is so dark, darker than yours and Maureen's and Jason's and Auntie Rita's and my hair is so coarse, not like yours or Maureen's. But then Maureen's father is white. Is that why Maureen called me a nigger? I hate Maureen. She's fat and ugly and still wearing braces. Mommy, why can't I have straight hair like Maureen? I'm so ashamed of my hair. I simply can't go back to clear water. Mom, I don't care what dad says. I can't go to stay with Grandma Dell this summer because the charm course is for three weeks and then remember Tauza is taking me to Ochi for three weeks in her new cottage. Do you think Tauza is going to marry Mr. Blake? Then I am going with you to Atlanta. You promised. So I really don't have any time to spend with Grandma this summer. And next holidays, remember, you said I can go to Venezuela on the school trip. I don't know what dad is on about, because if he feels so strongly, why doesn't he go and spend time with his mother? Only that's a laugh, because daddy doesn't have time for anybody anymore. I mean, is there ever a time nowadays when he's at home? I know Grandma Dell is getting old. And she's all alone. But she won't miss me. She quarrels with me all the time I am there. Mom, I just can't fit her in. And that is that. Okay, you know what? I have an idea. Why don't we just take a quick run down to see Grandma this Sunday? And then we won't have to worry about her again till next year. Daddy can take us and we can leave here real early in the morning. Though I don't know how I am going to get up early after Melody Ann's birthday party Saturday night. But we don't have to stay long with Grandma Dell. We can leave there right after lunch. So we will be back home in time to watch Dallas. Eh, hey, Mom? <laughs>